What is up everybody? Welcome to another Magic Arena video. I hope you're doing very, very well. I am excited to be here. Finally, we're back a little bit. Uh, I do apologize. Last week we did not get many videos up. I think we only got one up, in, in, in fact. Uh, and it was solely because I was sick last week. Uh, if you notice in some of the crack pack videos, my voice was a bit raspy, so I do apologize, but we are back. I'm very excited to say. Uh, I am going to be hopefully pre-recording a good bit, uh, because this coming week I'm actually going to be out of town uh, going on a work conference to South Korea, so pretty stoked about that, but obviously that means I won't be around to record, uh, and so I'm going to do the best I can to get some videos up early uh, and just schedule those uh, for, for whatever days I feel like, I guess. But uh, I am very excited to be back playing some more uh, Bolus's Citadel today. If you'll note, uh, we did play with this deck previously, and it was still a green-black version. However, this time we're trying to streamline it a little bit. Uh, so we've taken out a bunch of the removal, we've taken out a lot of the black in general, uh, and replaced that with more and more ramp, and then a couple of dig spells uh, that I'm hoping will make this deck, uh, it, it'll probably either go really, really well or really, really bad. Uh, that's kind of what I'm expecting, at least. Um, so a couple cards that were not necessarily in the original. Uh, the Arboreal Grazer is a really good way to turn one, lay a land, lay this down, uh, block yourself against a lot of the early aggro uh, matchups that we do see on the game of one. Uh, a lot of mono red stuff like that. This deals with that fairly well, just staves it off pretty well. Uh, but it also lets you ramp, so it gives you another uh, ability to, to lay another land down. Uh, Bonds of Flourishing, I believe, was in the previous list. I might be wrong, but uh, again, it gives you a little bit of life gain, but it also lets you search through your deck. Uh, we are only running a two of because this is super focused on the ramp side of things, uh, but it should be pretty fun uh, and will hopefully serve us pretty well. Excuse me. Uh, we do have Paradise Druid as another new include here. And this is also really, really good against those aggro matchups. Uh, not only does it help you ramp into the Citadel, which is obviously by far our most expensive card, but um, it also is just a very, very difficult card for them to deal with unless they get a Chain Whirler out, in which case, obviously, it is dead, unfortunately. But uh, other than that, it actually trades off pretty well for a lot of their early game creatures and stuff, so it tends to be pretty, uh, pretty well sorted against a lot of the early game matchups. Of course, the main combo here, uh, Wild Growth Walker in tandem with Bolus' Citadel and then a bunch of Explorer creatures means that the idea is that you're basically going to be uh, getting a ton of counters onto the Wild Growth Walker. You're playing cards from the top of your deck like crazy, uh, and then ideally starting to gain life if you'll notice all of the creatures uh, are three or below, which means you're at the very minimum going to break even on everything. Uh, obviously... Uh, Bonds of Flourishing isn't going to gain you any life, it does not um, uh, explore. Path of Discovery is really the way we get everything to explore. And then Gaia's Blessing is here uh, as a way to shuffle the graveyard back into our deck and then keep ourselves from milling out, uh, which is very, very possible with this deck, unfortunately. But uh, another kind of key piece I should mention is Wayward Swordtooth. Uh, this is a really, really good uh, engine for this deck because you can start playing multiple lands per turn. Not only does that help you ramp into the Citadel, but it also helps you play cards or play lands off of the top of your deck if you keep bricking and not hitting creatures. Uh, and so it's actually really, really good for this. Uh, I found it also just to be a really solid, just a beater. Uh, a lot of times, especially with this variant, uh, it's really easy to get uh, to the Ascend uh, the, uh, City's Blessing thing pretty quickly because uh, of Aberrant Grazers and all these kind of mana ramp spells, you're able to ramp everything out pretty quickly. So even if you don't hit a Citadel, this is kind of your plan B in terms of just swinging in with 5-5s. Five so it's pretty good for that reason. Uh, obviously, again, this is a very streamlined version of the deck. It's probably either going to flop massively or do really, really well very, very quickly uh, and be really awesome. Obviously, my uh, my thought process is we're probably going to flop a few times, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll jump into game one with this. We are going to do three casual games, as we always do with these decks. Uh, and yeah, I guess we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for game one with this very, very streamlined uh, Golgari Citadel deck. Uh, this is actually a very, very strong hand. So turn one, we get to lay down the Grazer. Turn two, uh, 
we actually get to sword tooth uh and then potentially branch walker and something else the following turn so i am definitely keeping this obviously the goal here is to not get thought erasured uh but we will see what happens uh, unfortunately you cannot plan on your opponent uh ooh, wild growth walker fantastic draw uh so we'll lay down the grazer uh we'll, we'll we will excuse me uh put down the overgrown tomb uh tapped obviously and then pass uh next turn definitely planning on the wayward sword tooth uh although it might be more beneficial to branch walker uh solely because we may not hit another land we are against the aristocrats deck that's fine okay so in this case perfect we're gonna do this lay out the sword tooth and then throw down the swamp and so now we are up to four mana on turn two which is great so next turn we can branch walker or excuse me wild growth walker first then branch walker uh and perfect we hit a land as well that's great so let's wild growth walker here uh branch walker here Does this give us one two three four five six seven eight nine nope not quite uh we're gonna graveyard that we really just need one more land uh that's literally all we care about at this point um and now one more land even with just one more permanent means we're gonna start swinging in for a good bit of damage so i am super super happy with this so far uh, obviously I am expecting them to have uh, some kill spells and things like that, so we'll see what they do here. Uh, it's very possible they try and kill the Swordtooth or the Walker, um, or they just play Seraph of the Scales, which definitely isn't great for us, but it's not the worst thing either. So we'll play out the Grazer, uh, which obviously isn't going to hit anything, but then we get to swing in here. So they can't, they can't give this death touch this turn, so I do think we'll swing in with that and the branch walker here. Um, either one, if they decide to trade off or, you know, just kind of whatever, I don't care. I'm just looking to deal as much damage as possible to them. We're going to be taking hits from the Seraph of the Scales, and that's fine. Um, don't like that, just because that gives them a good number of endless chump blockers. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. One more land is one more black source specifically is uh, really what we need here. Um, but assuming we get that, we're going to be in great position. They get vigilance until the end of the turn. I'm just going to go ahead and block here. Um, we're just going to save ourselves the life. We want to have as much life as possible to pad ourselves for if we get the Citadel out. Unfortunately, we don't here. Um, so again... We're going to do the same swing as we did last time. Um, they're probably going to block just this 1-1 one, one here, and that's fine. Uh, but hopefully we get in for a little, just a few points of damage, and then uh, ideally... Yeah, there we go. All right, so literally just looking for a land. I guess a Paradise Druid would also get us closer, although I definitely really just want a Black Source right now. Uh, as you can see, strong start as expected with a deck like this that is so streamlined. It's going to ramp out everything so quickly, which is great. Uh, but unfortunately, that does mean uh, we, if we do whiff on any part of this, it's a little bit slow. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. I am going to not block this time. Um, this holds off a lot more of the ground stuff, uh, as well, so. Another Wild Growth Walker. Well, that's certainly not really what we want, um, but we are going to swing in here with, again, the same two. Ah, I did not fully read that card. Well, misplays. It's fine. Um, so they're going to Death Touch this. And then this is just going to kill off that token. That's fine. And then this gets indestructible. Is that correct? Yeah. Ah, okay. So they sack a creature, start dealing some damage. There we go. Okay, I see how that works. Interesting card. I haven't seen uh, the Pontiff before. Um, I've seen many variants of this deck, but I don't believe I've seen that card yet. Um, which is fine. We'll see what we can do here. Uh, I think here we are going to block uh, if they just swing with the Seraph, and we'll see what else they decide to do here. Um, 
but we do need to save ourselves as much life as possible for, again, the hope of getting the Citadel. Uh, so we will block. Again, kind of featuring the Grazer here as a big uh, just stall for the game, which is exactly what we want to do in a deck like this where we are kind of, oh my gosh, we drew two Citadels in a row. Uh, well, that is unfortunate. We cannot do anything about that, uh, and we will just pass. We're not going to swing in. That is so unfortunate. We draw two Citadels in a row. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, we can still get another land. I think we've got one or two turns, maybe, before uh, we basically have lost. Um, but that Seraph of the Scales is such a good damage dealer um, that it does make it pretty difficult for us. And even then, we are going to be a little bit... Okay, so that gets us closer, but not quite there. Um, next turn, we can do it, but uh, obviously, we don't know if we're going to make it to next turn. Um, so the the downside here is obviously we're not just like sifting through our deck, being able to pick up a lot of the things, and that was the good side of the version of the deck that we ran last time uh, because it featured a little bit more explore with Seeker Squire and things like that. Uh, we do still have the, the Branch Walkers, obviously, and the Jade Light Rangers, um, which is helpful for sure. But uh, in a situation like this, oh, no. Oh, that's so bad. Uh, yeah, that kind of sucks. So that takes us off of the Citadel. If only we had drawn that like a little bit sooner. Um, but I think it's pretty clear we are in that deck, so... Okay, well... There's not... So 3, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that kills us, so we can't do that. Um... Ooh, I don't like this, guys. I think we might have just straight up lost. Uh, we'll throw this here, and then we'll throw this here, blocking as much damage as possible, but... It's pretty tight. I don't think we're going to be able to swing it this time. So we are going to take a good bit of damage, seven in fact, uh, off of this. Um, brings us down to four. So we either have to get really, really lucky somehow, which we did not. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, because that's not a black source, we can't do it. So I'm going to go ahead and concede. Unfortunately, as you saw, a very strong start, but it fizzles pretty quickly, which is, again, exactly what we expected. But we're going to keep trying this. Hopefully, we get a game win out of this one. But honestly, it's just a fun deck. So hopefully, we get to see what happens in game two. All right, guys. Welcome to game two. Obviously, we were actually kind of close with that first game, but it did not go our way. Uh, this hand is definitely keepable. Um, again, it has the Grazer, which is going to ramp us a little bit. Turn two. Hopefully we draw like a better turn two play, but we can just Gaia's Blessing to draw a card or something like that. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. We may just hold off on that and um, wait out for uh, turn three for something more, more spectacular. Um, perfect. We do want land. Uh, so we'll throw out the Grazer here. And again, this is going to do a pretty good job of dealing with some of these low ground creatures. At least that's the goal. They can just burn it out, but if they burn out a Grazer, like, it kind of feels bad, <laughs> I feel like. Um, but that's fine with me if that's what they want to do. Uh, again, kind of an Aristocrats deck, it looks like, where it's basically sacrifice outlets after sacrifice outlets, and that's cool. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may sack a creature. Okay, so we will block there. Um, just want to make sure that it wasn't going to do anything terrible to us, but... All right, so we'll do that. And honestly, I am going to go ahead and fire off the Blessing um, just to draw a card. Um, and that's a good draw, actually, so I'm okay with that. Uh, that's exactly what we want. Next turn, we can Path of Discovery, um, and then the following turn, we get to Wild Growth Walker, which is going to start gaining us life just on its own. Uh, but then... Hopefully, uh, we do have the three black sources for the Citadel, so hopefully we just need one more land. Uh, maybe next turn we can draw that, but we will see. Uh, block here. Uh, again, saving us a little bit of damage. The Grazer already has saved us four damage, which is pretty solid. Uh, I can't be too upset about that. So here we do have the option of 
Uh, Paradise Druid into Wild Growth Walker, which does allow us to Citadel next turn. Uh, but I actually think I'm going to take the slower line here. Uh, do this, that way next turn I can start exploring and gain a good bit of life back, regardless of whether or not we can play the Citadel. Uh, I just I feel like that's a better option in this case, uh, because they are going to be dealing us a good bit of damage this turn, but we start gaining a good bit back uh, with that Wild Growth Walker, in fact 6 next turn, uh, assuming it sticks around. So that's the plan. We also are going to draw ourselves into more lands, which is pretty good. Okay. So that's unfortunate, but that doesn't kill us. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to go down to nine, gain six back, ideally. Um, oh, well, that's super good. Um, though I definitely want to play the Paradise Druid this time because we do need... Um, we are going to graveyard that, and that's going to shuffle everything. Uh, so we gain three life back, shuffle everything back, and then we'll also Paradise Druid here. <clears throat> okay, so now that staves off ideally some attacks from the opponent. Uh, we do have the lands, so we could just trade off the Druid if we need to also, uh, which I'm not opposed to by any means. Uh, and we're at a somewhat healthy 15 life. Uh, that makes it a little bit trickier. Um, yeah, that does make it a little bit trickier, though I don't necessarily think impossible. Um, so what we can do here, and I'm perfectly okay trading these off, I'm going to do this. Um, they're obviously going to kill the druid in my opinion. Yeah, that just makes the most sense. But uh, that gets rid of that buff and they are now out of cards in hand, obviously, so. Um, down to seven, but we should be able to sure this up a little bit this turn. Oop. Sorry for the lag, guys. Play the Citadel, see what's on top. Oh, unfortunately, just a land. So two, three, four, five, six. We do have a blocker. So as long as we can make it to next turn, we should be good because we do have Wild Growth Walker into Jade Light Ranger, which is not only going to gain us a good bit of life, but um, yeah, that I think that we should be good. Hopefully they just like whiffed and get a land or something. Um, a mass two, sure. Four, five, six, seven, eight. No, actually we can't do it because, yep, they all have Menace. Dang, one turn away. Guys, that sucks. Okay, well, uh, as you can see, though, that was actually the combo. We were there. It's just we whiffed on the top of our deck by hitting a land. So uh, we will give this one more game. We'll see how it goes. If we lose, so be it. But this is definitely a fun deck to play. Hopefully, you guys will test it out as well and maybe give uh, some suggestions for variants. But uh, with that, I think we'll go ahead and jump into game three. All right, guys, here we are for game three. Hopefully, we can squeeze in a win with this green-black Citadel. Okay, they just conceded. Uh, we will not count that one. We'll go ahead and uh, come back to it and hopefully win uh, an actual game three where they don't just concede right away. All right, guys, here we are for actual game three. Uh, hopefully, they will not concede like the last person right away, but... Uh, I think I like this hand, so it's not amazing, it's a little bit slow, but uh, we do get to ramp out into maybe a Path of Discovery and then uh, Jade Light Ranger after, we'll see, uh, we'll try and be as mana efficient as possible, uh, we will play Overgrown Tomb out first, uh, tapped, and then next turn we plan to Woodland Cemetery into Paradise Druid, and then we will see what we can do afterwards. Um, but that's definitely going to ramp us as fast as possible. Uh, I do like that the Paradise Druid has Hexproof. It just makes things a little bit easier uh, against a lot of the burn decks and stuff like that. And normally, you'll at least get a trade-off. They are going to most likely Thought Erasure here. No. That's interesting. Uh, well, kind of don't want to tap that, but uh, we're going to run out the Path of Discovery and see what they do. They probably will counter this, or at least have a removal spell for it. Yeah, they're gonna negate. That's fine. Um, next turn we get to not only Jade Light Ranger, but also Branch Walker. 
Uh, so I'm okay with that. And uh, we'll see what they have. I really expected them to Thought Erasure, but uh, their growth spiraling, I guess they could do it now. Or they could kill spell. Yeah, they're going to cast down. Okay. So, what do we want to do here? We'll Branch Walker first. Or, excuse me, Jade Light Ranger first. Uh, just to get, hopefully, the more powerful threat. We are going to keep that on top. Uh, and then we'll Overgrown Tomb. Uh, we do want the Wild Growth Walker here. Uh, it's just such a key piece to this combo. And then we can uh, next turn Wild Growth Walker into Branch Walker, which is not only going to gain us life, but then dig us a little bit further. Um, so we'll go ahead. Well, first things first, let's swing. Uh, the other thing that this deck does fairly well is just kind of mid-range beatdown. Um, even in that first game, you saw it was kind of dealing a lot of damage without the combo. Uh, but in this case... It just kind of sneaks in a little bit of damage here and there. We'll see what they have. They probably will counter. Yep, surveil one. Okay. And then we will follow that up with a branch walker here. Explore. Hopefully getting a land would be ideal. Um, no, I think we're going to graveyard that. Uh, we really just need lands at this point. To keep up our, uh, to start getting closer to our Bolus's Citadel. They are going to pass again. So we will go ahead, move to attacks, and swing in with everything. And see what they do. They may respond. I guess they're not going to. That's fine. We'll go ahead and branch walker here. I guess the biggest threat that we are up against, other than counter spells, is just a uh, straight up like board sweeper. Chemister's insight, that's fine. Can we get a land? Yes, that's good. Uh, so we'll do that, and then I know I just said we're worried about sweepers, but I'm gonna go ahead and play out the second branch walker here, um, and that does get us to the citadel next turn. Uh, so it's dependent on the top of our deck what we can do after that, but we'll see. They're under a lot of pressure here, so if they don't have a sweeper, uh, then we are actually in a pretty good position. Um, they're gonna have to kill off the Jade Light Ranger at minimum. And then, no, even, they're gonna have to kill off at least two things, I believe. So, uh, or gain some life. I mean, if they've Raska's Contempt. Okay, so Hydroid Crisis, definitely going to do something for them here. Um, we will go ahead and do this. I like to do the Citadel first, uh, because depending on what we can get, we can actually swing in for a good bit more. Uh, we'll go ahead... We'll actually swing in with everything, because... Yeah. It's okay if they pick off a branch walker. I don't care. They can't, actually. They're going to have to block Jade Light. Yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven. So they're going to be down to one. So what could they have? If they get rid of Citadel, that's fine because we've got the pressure on board. If they sweep our board, then it's kind of okay because we have not only Jade Light Ranger in hand, but also the Citadel on the field. So we're in pretty good position, I think. Um, unless they're able to just sweep everything. But Growth Spiral is not going to do it, so I think they're just digging for an answer here, uh, which is fine by me. We will see what they get. You're going to be able to kill that? Yeah, that's fine. Not a problem. That just means they don't have a Sweeper. Yep, so there we go. We finally got to win a game that was not just an auto-concede. Uh, definitely a fun deck. We didn't actually even get to combo off, but it still obviously gets the beatdowns in, uh, especially against the slower matchups and things like that. So definitely a fun deck. Uh, highly recommend you guys playing with this one and uh, maybe even trying out some different variants. I know some people were playing blue in the deck. Uh, so if you're interested in trying it out, definitely, definitely check it out. And then uh, send me a list if you've got some changes that you'd like to see. Uh, I'm happy to do more videos on this one. It's a really fun deck. So uh, with that, though, thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a comment or a like down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Magic Arena video.